on to Faker. He's going to be guilty of that particular moment. And now both sides have to shake off. And we as fans and casters have to shake off a pretty damn insane game number one and see what sort of a game number two. Oh, this is good called. ultimates. This, we'll see where it's going into Urgot, of course. A very big possibility here. Unsure on the lane assignment. We've seen Faker, of course, on Silas already. First thought is Victor wave clearing with cleanse in the mid lane. And we see the cleanse opted into. Smeb definitely had a pickup performance. But how much of that? was Khan being off on his first two Orga ultimates. And then the first one, Snowboy. The second one, Snowboy into a better than expected lady. Still very young, but still so seasoned. A veteran here as we move into game number two. KT Faithful heading into the brush there. Cleared it. That's mentioned that Umti's level 4 at 7 minutes 50 is topside. Yeah, Chaos Storm going to fly forward here onto Khan as he's still holding on to the ultimate. Wants to actually land this one. Oh, the flash from Smeb gets him out of the way. He's got a ward in this brush. Gets the movement speed from the cube. But Khan able to get his way out. Timer. And yep. Of course, as Umti does park himself in position. Chaos Storm's in there. Cataclysm going to be dodged with the flash. But that is still flash on cooldown for Khan. Spellbook will help him out. Just like he was a Jace. Urgot appreciates the backup of Clid. Yeah, Clid comes in and very aggressively places Shelly down. Bardi going to move on up as Hero's entrance is available. And he's going to throw it in. Immediately coming down, Smeb, not a lot of options right here. As Fake is going to invest the ult because they know there's just no response. Shelly moving on through and they've just got more people here. Snowflower wanting to find the flank. And can KT actually get underneath this turret is the question. As the face check comes through, Snowflower does try to set this one up. We'll get the trample proc as BDD flashes to get the ultimate and will grab the first kill for KT onto the Callista and Zenit. And zero. So SKT with the plate lead is now we're trying to find a fight on the bottom side of the map. Snowflower wanting to get this trample in there. Is most likely going to do so and it lands onto Khan. Snowflower grabs that kill as well. Kick back onto Zenit, but he's going to survive for the moment as Faker gets his ultimate stolen away. He's going to be used against SKT here as well. There's the flash forward. Huge pulverize and headbutt back there from Snowflower. He dies, but he's done his job and Marta's going to get traded. KT a team fighting beautifully today. Khan went in too early and they're able to answer them where they stand. Do KT, I believe that was Fate's call actually used. On the Alistair, was watching That's the right there. Not happy that it's a mountain. Timing out is that BDD ult, you'll notice. Yeah, Circle of Frost is going to be there as the Frozen Tomb lands on Umpty. They are going to be able to get this Jarvan, but can they get more is the question. BDD ducting his way out. He's going to Mount Drake available here as well for SKT, but is this even going to get turned off? Because they can make this a 50-50 very effectively. Is Zenit trying to throw in these... Uh, Ricochets, the Baron does go down, but can KT actually find the fight? BDD trying to find his way in. Cow is going to go down, and SKT will just get out. KT floundering around the Baron. Exactly, because the jungler dies, and we already mentioned Smeb doesn't have TP. Big, but the Baron buff effect on the minions is insane. They're looking for the catch on Umpty. Yeah, he is going to dive on forward, but no, immediately taken down. Extraordinarily low into the stopwatch. Should be okay for the moment, but Zenit finishes him off. Now the Fates call is BDD. Dives on forward, trying to get the abscond down. There's the double knock up as Snowflower survives for so damn long. And SKT are taken down. Teddy able to get out Khan as well, but that's three dead on SKT's side. The clean Lee Sin usually gets away with it, but this time his hand in the cookie jar is slapped away and the Fates call steal looks pretty damn inspired as they get the extra two kills. This is at least going to cut down on the Baron buff power play. You know, it's top of your screen. That a lot of things as Faker's ultimate is going to be a big one. Headbutt Polv lands on Damata. They want to try and get him away from this one as he uses the Fates call. Gets back around though. Kick back onto Umpty. He's in trouble and there's no way for KT to respond. So that is just a free pick off. Onto the jungler of KT Rolster. So misread on the map position there. No one to play around Umpty. No flash, no chance. He goes down. They're looking for a flank. Hex flash over the wall. Yeah. Feeding, he does have a kickback opportunity. Is Yeah, they're just going to get a free one onto the Galio. It's backwards and forwards here. But top side of the map, Khan is saying, well, you can kill my support as many times as you want. I'm going to take down your base. And he does so. He gets the inhibitor turret. Will not be able to finish off the inhibitor just yet. It's as Mountain Drake spawns. And of course... This is all about that early game priority, getting SKT first run of the map. 
so far walks up, but with to a pretty de big degree of risk. Yeah, Claw comes in, Faker slows down Snowflower. It's a kickback still on to BDD. Does use it, throws it into the Callista, but she is going to be okay. You need to lock her down, and it's not happening this time. Bibi on death, cuts him up into mincemeat. The Alistair not going to be helping this fight for much longer as KT now trying to get out, and SKT should get a second mount. Yep. Life Baron is uh, not going to be around for very long. It's Marta. Hero's entrance is now available here for BDE. Umpty can dive on forward. We will be able to get a knock-up as Clid flashes over, flashes out again as Umpty trying to get in there. Faker with the ultimate down should guarantee this one as Khan gets the kill under the cow. Baron goes down. SKT, have some cake. Eat it too. Have some more as this is a disgusting battle in favor of SKT. We're looking towards a 2-0 telecom war as KT just fall apart. You're still living in SKT's world at 27 minutes. No shiver is going to be enough for this game. She stands up. Nice spell shield spell from Zenith. really nice, but he doesn't have another one. He does have a QSS, though, so he will be able to get out of the way as Faker has to use his Zonyas to stop the turret from killing him. Doesn't die fast enough as there's the back, and Clid is going to stop it. Bottom side of the map as Kingslayer actually helping out there as this battle is continuing picture in picture. Zenit not going to survive for much longer though, and Marta, he's not going to die to the turret either. This battle is ridiculously long as BDD versus Clid seems to be the story, and Clid says, I had your number game one, I got it game two. Seems like Clid's just destined to be a match winner. They're trying to stop the end. Yeah, Umti going to go golden. Snowflower underneath the turret, but doesn't have a lot of damage. Can't get rid of minions. And Teddy wants to get rid of lives on the side of KT. Smeb comes in. He can help kill some of these minions. And they do stop the game from ending at the 28-minute mark. But has the damage been done? Your first thought is yep. yes. And BDD, once again, going to be fighting against Clid and losing. Oh, I just wanted to see this hero's entrance work out. But Snowflower gets routed. Do Can't get himself into the pit. What I want to draw your attention to is that Umti gets in the pit. If you watch this smite battle, he gets into the pit after all. Oh, you don't think he's early. going to, but he gets in there. He smites as he's being disengaged. A good kick there. Baron at 400 health, but of course that was after the early smite. So he does get in the pit, which you could argue that's what the hero's entrance was for. Ends up being void. It was a bad scenario, as we could tell. The cleanup doesn't quite end the game, but it feels like it does all but. Yes. Well, KT now looking to try and hold onto their base. They keep their top inhibitor alive. And bottom lane inhibitor turret is still there. So it's not all destroyed at this point. Only one lane of super creeps to contend with, which shouldn't be an issue for double zeal item Infinity Edge, Siva. She's building towards a mortal reminder relatively soon. Going to have that one on board. As SKT try and close the door on this game. But first, on this inhibitor topside. Being respectful so far, there's the Fates Call. Snowfall has flash as well, so a lot of shenanigans can happen, but do they yeah. have the damage behind it, even with Sivir pretty damn fine? Yep. So Snowflower looking for his opportunity. SKT just probably not wanting to stack on top of each other because they know that elsewhere the damage is being done. There's the headbutt pole to land onto Clid. Flashes forward. There from Umpty. He's down to his Guardian Angel, and the kickback is on Snowflower with an ultimate, but Faker dives into the backline. Zenit, does he have enough? The spell shields are going to be utilized. Oh. Massive knockup with the Fates Call. The pulverized to land on top, and Zenit is still alive. It's a triple for Faker, though, as Marta wants to find more. Smeb's going to go down. Is that the Penta? No, it's stolen from Marta, as Faker will be the man to finish. Finish off SKT and 2-0 the Telecom War. A fake a quadra kill to close the Telecom War. SKT, damn do they have to fight for it. But 30 minutes in, 2-0. The scoreline does not do it fully justice. An awesome series, a fun one. Tipsy Turvy up and down, but SKT exit 2-0. Yep, in the end it was the SKT special that we got in the draft and then the SKT special in the faker carry in the last team fight. We've had a season where we've been watching Teddy, but of course, it comes to the telecom war, and Faker is the man that gets it done in the clutch at the very end. And just a beautiful way to end it. Some hugs coming in. Smeb to Marta, of course. Former teammates, Zenit also getting a hug after what was a very difficult game one, but played his heart out in game number two. A lot of his spell shields were beautiful. His QSS also fantastic, but a well-deserved bow here from SKT. And I just want to say thank you to this squad for giving us such a beautiful series for the Telecom War when it could have been a lot more fast and dirty.
This was definitely dirty, but it wasn't fast. And we did our best to ground expectations, but also nod to the fact that the telecom war, many more times than not, has delivered as a yeah. series. Yes, there has been some mares along the way, but this was a fun one where SKT were definitely too good. It does feel like the reverse of last year. Shoe on the other foot.